These are electronic drums. These are electronic drums. Of course, these are electronic drums, but so are these. With everything from convertible acoustic kits to concept e-drum kits on show, from big and small companies alike, it really felt like electronic and hybrid kits were everywhere at the UK drum show this year. So let's take a look at what was on offer and I'll sprinkle in my hands-on impressions and thoughts about the new gear at the 2023 show along the way. Walking around the exhibition floor for the first time, it was great to see that there were electronic kits set up at many booths outside of the usual manufacturer ones. I spotted a Gaver E kit set up at the Gibraltar stand showing off an interesting hardware configuration. There was a VAD 306 or 307 kit set up at the iFi Studio booth, and the Scan booth had a really cool setup with a VAD 507 as well. Scan are primarily known for being a specialist computer store in the UK, but they're actually also very much a music and pro audio retailer too. They were showing off how easy it is to create a streaming setup using an e-kit, cameras and software, and it was really cool to see them bring such an interesting booth to the show. Considering that they were the only retailer exhibiting that wasn't attached to or affiliated with a known music brand or manufacturer, they brought their A-game as far as I'm concerned. There were also some creative e-drum setups over at the Rhythm and Arch stall, where electronic pads met classic Swedish craftsmanship. These cool, compact wooden rack setups let you mount a surprising amount of acoustic or electronic pads and can easily be packed away into a flight case for transporting. The first 15 minutes of every hour at the drum show is designated loud time. Unfortunately this is a little bit of a double-edged sword for electronic drums. The F Note Pro sounded really nice through these speakers, but you'd be forgiven for not realising it with all the ambient noise. On the flip side, the obvious advantage of electronic drums is that you can carry on playing them with headphones the entire time. So I finally got chance to try out an F Note kit for the first time. Although my time with the F-Note Pro kit was brief, it was really positive. It's difficult to judge playability and sound quality in an exhibition environment because people have a tendency to mess with trigger settings and volumes, but I really enjoyed it. The onboard kit sounded punchy, yet natural, the dynamics responded well to my playing, and I can see why a lot of users hype up the hi-hat response. I was able to get a good feel of how F-Note are positioning themselves in the market with the simple interface and natural plug-and-play style sounds. The F Note 3X was one of the most enjoyable small pad kits that I've played, and it also sounded pretty great from the moment that I sat down. I'm really glad I was able to finally try these kits, and hopefully I can get a proper hands-on experience with them in the future. At 12pm on Saturday, Jane from Jebeki hosted How to Hybrid, a workshop explaining the interesting and exciting world of merging electronic drums with acoustics for home and live situations. There was a great presentation from Enter Shikari's drum tech, Jay Featherstone, explaining how Rob from Enter Shikari has been using Jebeki triggers on tour for triggering electronics and also to control noise gates for a cleaner front of house sound. He also advocated for the use of triggers inside acoustic drums rather than attaching external ones for speed, durability and aesthetics. Following this was a performance by Ugly Club drummer James on his hybrid kit using Jebeki side triggers under his acoustic heads.
There was a lot of knowledge, information and experience condensed into the 45 minute workshop and it really highlighted the flexibility of using drum triggers, whether that's for a fully electronic setup or for turning your live show hybrid. Over at Jebeki's stall there were two striking kits set up for punters to play on. A mirror chrome kit complete with a glitter ball wrapped snare drum and kick hoops featuring converted low volume cymbal triggers and powered by a Pearl Mimic Pro module and a TD27 powered kit with a very snazzy wrap, their dark bronze real feel cymbals and an e-cowbell trigger. This is the first time I've tried Jebeki's multi-cone triggers. I believe the snare was using their four-point trigger assembly and the toms were all using three-point ones. Again, it's a floor model with triggers that weren't dialed into my playing style, but they all triggered well across each zone and I could barely locate the hot spots right over the cones, which is great. The display of their most up-to-date trigger systems was eye-catching with the new white brackets and rounded angles and it reminded me just how many different trigger options Jebeki have available for a range of prices. The one that that caught my eye was the triple center cone setup which apparently helps to both reduce the hot spot and retain positional sensing. I'm hoping to try that one out soon. The new Evans Hybrid Sensory Percussion System made a big appearance at the show too. This is a newly updated version of Sunhouse's Sensory Percussion from 2015 under the Evans brand and it's a really interesting system. I won't go deep into it here but it can be used on either acoustic or mesh heads, hence hybrid, though they showed it off entirely on mesh setups here presumably so that it could be used all day. You would normally need to train it to your playing style in order to fine tune up to 10 zones on the pads but we speed ran it due to time. I was shown through a bunch of different presets ranging from melodic soundscapes to more conventional drum kit sounds but despite the 10 minutes or so that I had with it I could tell that I was barely scratching the surface. I'm really looking forward to the possibility of spending more time with this one because it seems incredibly promising and it's a completely different approach to practically any other electric electronic or hybrid system. Electronic drums also made their way onto the main stage and into the master classrooms too. Ellie Golding's drummer and musical director Joe Clegg put on a great main stage performance and demonstration, championing a fully electronic setup using a Roland VAD706 and SPDSX Pro. Unfortunately, I arrived a little bit late and was quite far back, so apologies about the terrible footage. Hopefully a full version of this will get uploaded to YouTube because it was chock full of solid information and great insights about using electronics for a huge pop production. Much of the presentation was pre-recorded video that was all being controlled by his kit too, which was a really unique touch. Drumming legend Jojo Mayer put on a performance of Me Machine using real-time AI-generated music. He was using a hybrid setup of mainly acoustic drums with a couple of Roland BT-1 bar triggers and some form of finger drumming pad, I believe. And he was also using a bop pad MIDI controller to adjust some of the music in real time. Over in a masterclass room, Emma Taylor was rocking a full Roland VAD 507 setup for her performances. Once again, great to see a fully electronic setup in this situation. Back on the exhibition floor, both the Gaver and Roland booths were some of the busiest I saw all weekend. Gaver had four kits on display, one for each of their G9, G5 and G3 modules, along with a much bigger kit that was also powered by the G9. This is the first time I've gone hands-on with the G3 module and it's surprising just how consistent the experience is across all of their kits. As I mentioned in last year's drum show video, the triggering has definitely improved since my review, but I haven't gone deep enough to say exactly how much. Roland's booth showed off a lot of different kits, but the one that immediately caught my eye was the Deflux. I remember this kit being announced or shown off maybe a year ago or so, and I believe it's pretty much a concept kit so you won't find it available to buy anywhere. However, it's a really interesting kit that uses some very novel ideas, most notably the kick belts that can be held down to sustain notes. Each of the polyhedral pads can produce three sounds across the mesh heads and three sounds across the rims, so you've got a lot of sonic options to 
to play with. I wasn't able to record audio from the kit due to the rack setup that everything was encased in, but it was hooked up to both a Handsonic and a TD50 module with an AB switch pedal that let you swap between the two. I think the Handsonic was producing the sounds that were more pitch and note based, whereas the TD50 had more percussive sounds, though all of the sounds were pretty experimental and really fun to play around with and explore. The more conventional kit setups included pretty much every current V-Drums model from the TD-02KV up to the VAD-706, along with an SPD-SX Pro, SPD-SX, Octopad SPD-30 and the SPD-20 Pro which also released a few years ago. I had no prior experience with the SPD-20 Pro but it was fun to use for the brief time that I played it. It appears to be aimed at a pretty specific market but I can see the appeal. I also played the VAD-507 which is the first time I've used the KD200 kick pad and the new thin range of symbols like the CY16RT. The kick pad felt really nice to dig into with its KD10 style centre pad. As a long time user of Roland's older symbols, these new ones felt familiar but lighter and overall more pleasing to hit. Not a wow experience but a very nice upgrade from the older models. Okay, it's time to talk about the elephant in the cornered off room. On the side of Roland's main booth there was an appointment only section where the unreleased DW kit, the DWE, was being shown off to some lucky punters for the first time in the UK. As many of you will have heard, DW was bought out by Roland at the tail end of last year, but this kit is still very much its own thing. As I broke down in my last video about this kit, it's a DW collector's kit with internal triggers, and it's using completely wireless technology for the drum and cymbal triggers. It's out fitted with mesh heads and metal electronic cymbals, but the kit can also be easily converted into a premium acoustic drum kit by removing the triggers and swapping the heads and cymbals to acoustic ones. The triggers communicate with a small hub which can then be attached to a laptop, running DW's new Soundworks software, or any VST you have or even a drum module via MIDI out if you prefer. But of course the kit on display this weekend was running their software, which has a range of fully multi-layered sampled acoustic kits and cymbals sets included. There are plenty of presets available or you can build your own kits with this software and it works in a very similar manner to any other drum software that you might already be familiar with. I wasn't able to take an audio capture of the kit but I can give you my impressions of what was on display. The Soundworks kit sound great with a really nice dynamic response across all of the available zones and articulations. The snare has positional sensing on the head, rim click, rim shot and cross stick detection as well as a switch on the snare strainer that lets you you flip the wires off as you would on an acoustic kit or just swap to a different sound. The toms have head, rim click and rim shot as well as the ability to hand mute them and pitch bend them with pressure and all of the metal cymbals are three zone including the hi-hat and you can choke the crashes and ride. Everything was playing well on the show kit and the wireless adds no latency to the kit compared to using wires so any latency will only be the result of the computer and the audio interface as it would be with any other e-drum setup. I heard that the impressions from other people that played it were really positive too. As I disclosed in my previous video, I am part of the testing for this, so you'll get many more thoughts about it in the near future as the kit is coming soon. It was awesome to see so much love for electronic drums on display and I had a great time at the show. I also had the pleasure of meeting a few viewers of the channel. Thank you so much for coming over to say hi. If you want any additional information about kits that you've seen in this video, I've linked to a bunch of related reviews, first impressions and news videos in the description. If you want new kits, instruments or samples for your electronic drums, go check out my store over at the eDrumworkshop.com. I've got all sorts available for many modules, but above all, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers!